Hey everybody, I'm James Riley. I'm back with more Half Upon a Time. We are on Chapter 8 now. Who would have thought we'd get this far? Not me. Um, it looks like I'm going to go to about Chapter 10, so we're in the uh, home stretch of what I'm going to read to you online, but the book is always available to you in libraries and bookstores and hopefully even your classroom when you go back to school. Uh, so, Chapter 7, we found out that uh, the Huntsman is hunting Jack and May now and that uh, Jack thinks May's grandmother could be the long-lost Snow White. So we're going to find out more about that right about now. Chapter 8, Half Upon a Time. I said, I wish you'd mention that your grandmother was Snow White, Jack repeated. It would have been easier than figuring it out all on my own. Snow White, May said, her eyes narrowing as she glared at him. Just because I'm in some kind of fantasy world doesn't make me stupid. Nah, Jack said. If anything, you would have been born that way. She punched him for that. Explain what you're talking about, she growled. You're talking about THE Snow White, like with the Wicked Queen and all? Yes, did she ever talk about the Wicked Queen, Jack asked, his eyes going wide. No, because my grandmother isn't a character in a fairy tale. Fairies don't have tales, Jack said, pointing at the fairy in May's hair, whose behind was sticking straight up into the air as she snored. Not too observant, are you? he said. May snorted. I'm going to observe me punching you again in a second. Not tales. Tales. In the book, it says, not T-A-I-L-S, T-A-L-E-S. Stories. Anyway, Snow White isn't real. She's made up. That's what the Wicked Queen used to say, Jack told her. The Queen started rumors that Snow White wasn't real. Other people thought Snow White had died. But I guess she was just, well, in punk. He smiled. You have no idea how great that news is, that Snow White is still alive. Okay, fine, May said. Snow White's real here. You've got fairies, you've got magical books. You probably have cats walking around in boots, too. Not anymore, Jack said. If there ever were cats like that, they were hunted down years ago with the rest of the talking animals. That shut the princess up for a moment. What, seriously? She said finally. Are you kidding? Jack shook his head. It's a long story. It's actually a story I intended to uh, include in Half Upon a Time. Spoiler alert. Uh, we were going to get into the talking animals and what happened to them a little bit more than we did. Um, maybe it'll show up later. Who knows? It's a long story. Anyway, Snow White disappeared back at the end of the Great War, and no one's heard from either her or the Wicked Queen since. But why would you think my grandmother is Snow White, May asked. I mean, her name's Eudora Winterborn, and don't make some kind of stupid connection between winter and snow. Look at the facts, Jack said. First, your grandmother is a spitting image of Snow White. Pale skin, black hair, beautiful. Right, May said, the fairest one of all. I get it, but you just described like half a bajillion women. Second, Jack continued, ignoring her. Did you hear what she and the Huntsman were talking about? They mentioned the Wicked Queen and Betrayal and Snow White. And the mirror! He shuddered. If the Wicked Queen has her mirror again, we're all dead. Mirror? May asked. It's the Wicked Queen's most powerful magic, Jack said. From what people say, her magic mirror knows everything. And answers any question you ask it. Even if what you're asking about it hasn't happened yet. That doesn't make sense, May said. How could it know the future? Jack looked at her oddly. I just said it's magic. Oh, okay, thanks for the explanation, she said. So my grandmother mentioned something about a mirror in the Wicked Queen. That doesn't make her Snow White. Think about the stories you've heard, Jack said. The Wicked Queen sent her huntsman out to kill Snow White, but Snow White escaped. The huntsman must have been tracking her down this whole time. And when he finally found her, and you, he brought her back to the Wicked Queen. That's not exactly how I remember it, May said, her forehead crinkling. But who knows, my grandmother never let me listen to any of those stories for some reason. Anyway, what was that Great War thing you mentioned? Jack paused, forcing himself not to remember certain bad memories. Basically, the queen of a tiny kingdom invaded all the lands around her, destroying everything she came across. She'd taken over the entire eastern half of the continent before the western kingdoms decided to unite against her. Most people say it was Snow White who actually brought us all together to fight the Wicked Queen, as people started calling her, but it didn't go well. The kingdoms couldn't stand up to the Wicked Queen's army of goblins, trolls, dragons, pretty much any kind of monster you can imagine. It also didn't help that the Wicked Queen had her magic mirror. It's hard to win a battle when your enemy knows exactly what you're planning. Well, okay, May said. But something happened that the, w that the Queen somehow didn't see coming. I guess that's the limit of the mirror. If you don't ask the right question, you're out of luck. One of the Wicked Queen's inner circle of knights, people call them her eyes, capital E-Y-E-S, one of them betrayed her. This knight supposedly fell in love with Snow White and, and helped her and a small group of rebels break into the Wicked Queen's castle. You've probably heard of most of them. Rapunzel, Rose Red, who people thought was, was Snow White's sister, the Piper and his magical flute, Edward, the Cursed Prince, and the Wolf King. We'll get to the Wolf King in a second, but Edward, the Cursed Prince, is uh, 
a frog. <laughs> That's what he was cursed with. I don't think we ever get back to Edward in the stories, but... I thought you said all the animals were gone, May asked. The Wolf King, King might be gone now, too, Jack said quietly. The only one of Snow White's groups that anyone's seen since then is Rapunzel, who is now a queen of the Western Kingdoms. We know they succeeded in defeating the Wicked Queen somehow, because all the Queen's armies dispersed and the Great War ended. But Snow White, the Wicked Queen, and the rest were never seen or heard from again. And that was like 12 years ago now. So, May said, if no one's seen Snow White since, how did she end up in the real world? The real what? Jack said. The real, the real world, May said, where I'm from. She rolled her eyes. Okay, fine. How did she end up in punk? She must have hidden herself there, Jack said. Some stories say that Snow White broke the Queen's mirror during their final battle. And when your grandmother was taken, the huntsman told the little monster things to look for a missing piece of the mirror. Jack paused, then slowly turned to look at the necklace hanging around May's neck. She noticed his gaze and pulled the golden crown out from under her shirt. This, she said, you don't really think this is a piece of the queen's magic mirror? She told you to keep it hidden, Jack said, and if it is, that might be all that's been stopping the wicked queen from coming back. If she had a working mirror, she'd be all powerful again. He swallowed hard, which means the only thing keeping the wicked queen from taking over the entire world is that necklace. May shot him a dark look. Well, at least you're not being overly dramatic. Despite her sarcasm, she shuddered and slipped the necklace back under her shirt. Okay, I'm not willing to say you're right, but I guess you could be close to somehow being almost right. Either way, it sounds like we're going to need that help that my grandmother mentioned in her note, huh? Sounds like, Jack agreed. Only, let's find it in the morning. He laid down a little more, with his head against the tree, exhaustion suddenly smacking him in the face. May did the same, and pretty soon their eyelids were drooping. I have to warn you, Jack said quietly, I'm not very good at this sort of thing. Good at what sort of thing, May asked, opening one eye slightly. Well, Jack said, if your grandmother is Snow White, then you really are a princess. Ha! May said drowsily, that a problem for you? A bit, Jack admitted. I can't stand royalty. May laughed softly. Jack smiled too, taking one last look at May as the princess fell asleep. She really was cute, all things considered, and she didn't act like princesses in stories did. Useless and vulnerable and needing rescuing. Maybe some royals weren't actually that different from the rest of the world. He stops himself there. His sleepiness must have been messing with his head. May was the granddaughter of Snow White, a member of one of the oldest royal families in existence, and she'd grown up in the lap of luxury with more wealth than he could even imagine. She was as royal as they came, and therefore was nothing like him. Wouldn't it be funny if she were, though? The last thing he heard before he fell asleep was tiny, high-pitched laughing from all around him. Apparently someone else thought it was funny, too. That's spoopy. So, we're going to get back to Chapter 9 in a few days, and you will find out who these little voices laughing at Jack are. Uh, and we'll see a little bit more of what happens. Um, yeah, I, I don't want to spoil anything, but I, I'd love to tell you all about the stuff. Um, the, uh, the talking animals thing was going to be big. It was actually, I started book two, Twice Upon a Time, with the scene with uh, the three bears at one point. Um, but between me and my editor, we decided it sort of wasn't necessary, and it kind of opened up this whole other thing that um, got away from their quest, so we removed it. But there might be no more talking animals to come. Who knows? Okay, uh, I will see you soon, and thank you for listening.